Exercise 3A, Sentiment Analysis. So out of all the R packages I've seen thus far, this is probably the coolest ones to execute in real time because it allows you to analyze polarity or the positive or negative sentiment of a given word. For example, a word like hate would have a negative polarity and depending upon how negative a word is, the polarity would continue to go further down the negative scale. Whereas words like happy and excited would have a positive polarity. So what we'll be doing is taking a subset of songs from the top 100 Spotify songs of 2017, and then we'll be taking a look at all the lines within a song, and ultimately the words that make up each of those lines, and then assigning each of those words a polarity score using the R package tidy text. And this is great for looking at survey results and it allows you to really harness the power of a computer to act like a human and detect whether or not something is positive or negative without you having to really sit there and look through and assign values. To. Because in aggregate, the R sentiment analysis is quite accurate. So let's get this kicked off by installing two packages. The first is tidy text and the second is DPLYR. And I'll just go ahead and fast forward the video until this completes. And now we'll install the DPLYR package. And once again, I'll fast forward until this completes. All right, so now that we have both tidy text and DPLYR installed, let's go ahead and move on to the exercise. Okay, so our first exercise is going to deal with Spotify songs and analyzing the polarity of the underlying words within each of the lines of those songs. So to get started, make sure that you're on the worksheet exercise 3A, sentiment analysis words and then click on the Spotify sample data source. And just to explore the data a bit, let's drag out artist, the song title, all of the lines within that song, and all of the words that make up each of those lines. And our task is to essentially assign a polarity score however negative or positive each of these words are and have that roll up to develop an average polarity at the song title level. And just a heads up, some of these words aren't appropriate for a younger audience, but the intent of this exercise is to really prove out that the sentiment analysis that R uses to decipher whether or not a word is positive or negative really works. Okay, so now let's remove everything but title and word. And this gives us every single word that's used in a given song. The next step is to create the polarity calculation. So let's hop over to our calculated fields dashboard. And we'll copy our polarity calculation. Create new calc field and we'll call it polarity. Paste in that code and hit apply. Okay. Now let's drag this polarity field onto our row shelf. But before we do that, let's make sure to pause any auto updates so we're not sending random calculations to R that aren't going to render a result for us because we've yet to set the scope of the calculation using the compute on. 
Okay, so now we have our polarity table calc. We'll right click and choose compute using Word. We'll press play. So what this calculation has rendered for us is a overall polarity score at the song level based upon the average of all the polarities that are rendered from all the words within a song. So as you scroll down, we can see that this song, for example, has a negative seven polarity, while this one has a positive five polarity. This one is quite negative with a negative 23. So now let's actually create a visualization so we can see all the songs at the same time versus having to scroll through all this data and try to figure out which is the most negative and most positive. So let's go ahead and press pause again. And now let's drag the title onto detail along with the word onto detail. And let's just flip flop these. And let's change the, the mark type. Because right now it's rendering bars. Let's change this to be circles. And now let's press play. Okay, so what we have here is all the songs in their own individual circle. And now we can see visually which songs are above the neutral zero polarity and which ones are far below on a negative scale. In order to spice this up a bit, let's copy the polarity field by holding down control or the command key on a Mac and dropping that onto color. And this will create a copy of that particular field so we can use it up here and down here. And now we can see everything that crosses that zero threshold is a light blue and then it gets darker and darker based upon how positive it is. And then everything below that zero gets more in the red zone. We're missing the artist. So let's go ahead and add artist to the tooltip. And now we can see that this first song, which is the most positive, is an Ed Sheeran song. Same with the second song in the list here. And third, so a very positive songwriter. Whereas here at the bottom, we have artist Kendrick Lamar with the most negative song. Actually, both of these are Kendrick Lamar songs. And then Post Malone, Bruno Mars, DJ Khaled. So you probably know a lot of these artists and the songs they put out. You probably have a pretty good idea that a lot of the stuff that they're doing is positive, whereas hip hop rap music is pretty negative. So before we wrap this exercise up, let's just tweak a couple of more things. Click on the size of the circle and just shrink it down a little bit more so you can see more individual circles because a lot of them are overlapping. Just a bit more. There we go. So now we can actually see the individual songs 
and to set the axis equal on both the positive and negative side. So in order to update that, let's right click, edit axis, and we'll do a fixed axis with a negative 30, positive 30 overall axis. So now we can visualize that there were definitely more positive songs overall in this data set. However, the ones that were negative were more negative than the most positive songs. You can see this gap here from 30 to 20 roughly, whereas here we have two songs that fell into that particular range on the negative side. So feel free to play around with this by adding labels, perhaps visualizing things differently. All right, so this concludes the exercise on analyzing the sentiment at a word level. In the next exercise, we're going to be analyzing actual sentences and seeing whether or not those sentences and in aggregate their paragraphs have a positive or negative sentiment. So let's move on to exercise 3B, which we'll be looking at Airbnb reviews.